In this video, we're going to learn how to read and how to use coordinates in Key Stage 2. We're first going to look at how to read coordinates in one quadrant. And then we're going to move on to how to play our battleship game using that one quadrant. We're then going to move on to how to read coordinates in all four quadrants, which is something you need to know by the end of Key Stage 2. And then we're going to introduce how to play the battleship game with a four quadrant grid. A phrase I like to use to remember how to read coordinates is along the corridor, then up the stairs. When we see coordinates, we see them in a bracket. The first digit tells us how far we have to move along the X axis. The X axis is the one that runs along the bottom. The second coordinate, which is the second digit in the bracket, tells us how far we need to travel up, up the Y axis. I also hear a lot of people say Y to the sky. So the X axis runs along the bottom and the Y axis runs up. We first of all move along the X axis and then we move along the Y axis. So we move along the corridor first, so our first digit is 2. We always start at 0, which is called the origin. So we start at 0, when we move along to 2, and then we move up to 3. And that is that coordinate. Let's have a look if we swap the digits round, if the 3 was first. We still move along the corridor, then up the stairs, because coordinates are always in a bracket where the first digit is X and the second digit is Y. So we move along to 3 and then we move up to 2. So if you just remember along the corridor then up the stairs and if you move in the directions that are in the brackets you will get to your coordinate point. Okay let's have a look at our battleship game. Now I've got on here an example of my opponent's grid and then I've got my guesses at the bottom. So for example, if I was to guess 4, 3, I might want to jot it down so that I don't repeat it. If I said to my opponent 4, 3, my opponent would check their grid, they'd go along to 4, then up to 3, and they might want to mark on their grid that you've guessed there, and you haven't managed to hit their cross, so they would say, miss. So I might want to put a little cross or something to indicate on my uh, coordinate on my guess that I didn't get it. I might also want to plot it on my grid. And then your opponent would guess, have a guess of where the crosses are on your grid. So they would give you um, a coordinate, you would check on your grid like we did here on the, on the opponent's grid, you would check your grid and you would see whether or not you had, um, whether they had hit one of your crosses or not and you would tell them hit or miss. And now it's your go again. So let's say this time we guess 9-1. This time your opponent would go 9 along and 1 up and they would see that actually you've managed to get one of their crosses. So they would say, hit. So you have got one there. I'm going to tick it on my 9-1, and on my grid, I'm going to put a cross on the 9-1, and that shows that I have located one of their crosses. And then you keep going backwards and forwards until one of you has found all of your opponent's crosses. Now, you don't need to use five crosses. You can use three crosses. You can use ten crosses. You can do whatever you like. You can make your... Um, coordinate grid bigger if you want to or you can just use the one that we have downloadable in our comments. Have fun! Moving on to finding coordinates in all four quadrants, it's very similar. We still go along the x-axis first and the second coordinate is still the y-axis but this time when we go along our corridor we could go left or we could go right. And when we go up the y-axis, we can also go down the y-axis now. So we're still going along the corridor. When you walk along the corridor, it's not a one-way system. You could go left or right. 
And when you have stairs, it's also not one way, you can go up or down stairs. So you can still use the concept of along the corridor first and then use the stairs second. So let's have a look, negative two. Now, if you look on your grid, you can see negative two is to the left. So we're going to go backwards, just like a normal number line. Numbers go in this order. And when we go backwards behind zero, it goes into our negative number line. So negative two. And then my second coordinate, my Y says three. It's a positive three. It does not have a negative sign next to it. So I'm going to go up. So it would be two, three. Negative two, three, sorry, is there. Let's have a look at the same digits in a different order. This time I have two, it's a positive two, so I'm going to go along to two, then it's a negative three, so I'm going to go down three. So I am at two and negative three. Finally, let's have a look at what happens when they're both negative numbers. I go to negative two, which is back, and I go down to negative three. And there we have all our examples for the quadrants. I showed two, three earlier along in the video. So if you didn't watch that part of the video, two, three is a long two and up three. So let's have a look at how we would play the battleships game with the four quadrant grid. So let's imagine that on the left hand side is your opponent's grid and it was your go first. You would call out your first guess. So for example, I'm going to say negative four, three. And I'm going to make a note of my guess on my grid. Negative four, three. My opponent would go to their grid. They would go along to negative four and they would go up to three and there's nothing there. So they would say, miss. So on your grid, you can choose to cross it out or circle it, put a cross next to it. And you might also want to, on your mini grid, go along to negative four and up to three and just indicate that there was nothing there. That stops you from making the same guess again. It would now be their turn to guess. So let's say they um, called out three, negative two on your grid. You would check your grid. You would see whether or not there was a cross there. If there wasn't, you would say miss. And if there was, you would say hit. Whether you hit or miss, you still take it in turns. So it's now your go again. So this time I'm going to guess negative five, negative two. They would check their grid. They would go along to negative five. So that's left. And then negative two means they go down. And you can see that you've actually hit. So they would shout out hit. So you might want to tick your guess and perhaps on your grid also mark where negative five, negative two is. And you keep going until one of you has found all of the other one's crosses. Now you don't have to use five crosses, you could use three crosses, you could use 10 crosses, you could use a bigger grid, it's completely up to you. The downloadable templates that I have um, put into my comments have got a four quadrant grid going up to six, or a one quadrant grid, which is going up to 10. So give that a go with a family member. It is a game that you could actually play with a friend over Skype or over WhatsApp. If they print the grid and you print the grid, it's a great game to play online through um, FaceTime or your computer screen. You don't have to be with the person. And in fact, if you're not with them, you're more likely to not be able to see where their crosses are. So good luck, give that a go, and I hope you enjoy it. For more lessons, activities or past stats questions on position and direction, search for Pocket Private Tutor in the app stores. Take a look at the links in the comment section and you will get a free downloadable copy of our Battleships game. Have fun and good luck guys!